all of our projects are interesting, but this one um, has has an awful lot going on um, within it. Uh, this is a project that evolved out of uh, a lot of experience in the region, working in South Africa, working in Mozambique, working in, in other countries, Zambia, Malawi, Zimbabwe. Uh, and and it's, it's an outgrowth, in a sense, of, of that uh, in, in a, in a Fundamental terms, we've uh, partnered with, with the National Treasury to, to do this project. And, and the Treasury is funding half of the project, and, and WIDER is funding the, the other half. Uh, and this project, kind of following that financing model, has, has two elements to it, two big elements. Uh, one is work that is more or less focused on South Africa, and the other is work that is more or less focused on regional issues, regional integration, broad issues that are of interest to, to everybody uh, within the region. On the first part, which is the, the South Africa part, uh, we have uh, a series of components, uh, three, I think. The first is firm level analysis. And, and here we've had a, a tremendous degree of success in working with the Treasury and the Revenue Service to make available tax data, both personal income tax and firm level tax, over time uh, to try to look at what's happening with firms, firm dynamics. We can also look at employment. These are big issues. Uh, international experience, spirits in Europe, Vietnam, uh, other countries uh, indicates that these data, once they're properly set up, uh, are, are, are a real trove of information for what's happening within the economy. Uh, to, to, you, to sort of via this tax data that, that we've really learned that uh, there are big variations in productivities across firms within a single industry. Uh, we can look at that. We get a notion of what happens to productivity if there's a policy change. Uh, and, and we can track in it with a tremendous degree of, of detail. So, so that component has been, has been going. We have five teams of South Africans, two international teams working on the tax data. We have five computers sitting on the 20th floor of the of the national treasury, with these data sit, sitting uh, in them, and it's a, it's a it's a tremendous amount of data. This will be a long term uh, effort and and project. We'll come up with our first outputs uh, at at the end of the year. Underneath uh, this component, um, the the treasury works with uh, a, a large a big model of the entire economy. Of, of South Africa. And these, these models are very, very useful for lots of things. Tax policy, we've used for carbon tax, we've used for climate change, uh, we've used for energy and energy policy. And, uh, and obviously one wants to have the best possible representation of, of the South African economy. And one of the things that you can do to validate the model, and this is a, a good idea but, but rarely done, is instead of frequently we take the model and we run it forward to see what, what, what might happen. Uh, in this case, we're going to take the model and we're going to run it backwards and see if we can reproduce what has happened and, uh, and look at how, how well do we reproduce what has happened and what kind of parameters do we need to, to make that happen. This also allows us to do certain counterfactuals. Once we've gotten this model to, to reproduce history, then we could go back in history and say, well, what if we had decided to do A instead of B, and, uh, and what would the consequence potentially have been? So it becomes a, a potentially powerful tool uh, for analysis. The third area in there is, is, is energy and their choices. So we've worked a lot with the government on their integrated energy plan, uh, other, other elements of that, looking at technological choices. How, how should there be a big nuclear build? How, how big, if there's going to be a nuclear build, how big should it be? Uh, what are options in, in the short and the long term? Is it possible? To, to delay such that options remain on the table instead of committing big investments. And the Treasury is, of course, extremely interested in this. Uh, you know, the size of these investments is very, very large. Uh, to do a big nuclear build could take 20% of total investment in South Africa for years. 
six or seven years in a row. Uh, so it's it's a major major decision, and and the you know the company that would do it is ESCOM, and the owner of that company is the Treasury. So so the Treasury needs to know uh, whether whether this is a good idea or not. So that's on the the the, the sort of the South Africa side. What we want wider to do is to serve as a platform for, for discussion of regional uh, issues uh, in, the, in Southern Africa. And one of the characteristics of Southern Africa is that uh, you know, South Africa is much, much larger than, than any of its neighbors. It's both larger and, and wealthier. And so there, there's a considerable imbalance there. And uh, we believe that wider can provide a platform where we can have discussions, uh, joint research uh, with institutions and countries across the region looking at specific issues. Uh, our thought is that specific opportunities for where there's gains uh, for groups of countries or pairs of countries are one of the better ways to proceed. So we're looking in some specific areas. And the ones that we're looking at are uh, supermarkets. So there's been a massive expansion of, of supermarkets throughout the region. We want to see what that has done. And is this actually fomenting some kind of procurement within the countries? Is our, our Zambian producers now uh, supplying South African uh, supermarket chains, uh, uh, these kinds of questions. Uh, there's a big interest in the region in uh, basically the poultry value chain, uh, uh, oil seeds, uh, energy sources, and then and then uh, uh, grow, growing birds. Uh, there's there's large potentials uh, in the region, and these are quite raw potentials. Uh, so we're looking at that uh, in Zambia. Uh, we'll move into Mozambique. Uh, we're also looking at mining and mining services. So there's a great deal of mining uh, that's happening, but uh, there's a lot of need to uh, you know, keep the mining equipment going, design, these kinds of things, and, and how uh, those kinds of opportunities are, are working out. Uh, the last is in transport, and we're going to focus on, on trucking. And uh, what we find is that uh, there, there is the possibility for cartelization in, in trucking, that, that trucking can be a real uh, barrier, and that, that actually certain, a, a relatively few regulatory changes uh, or expansions can, can drastically increase the efficiency of trucking, the competitiveness and efficiency of trucking. And uh, if we can do that for dry goods, trucking being the most common uh, form of transport within the region, uh, th these could yield uh, big gains. The final area that, that is also starting up is in, is in bioenergy. And the only way really to do a substantial bioenergy program is, is regionally. Uh, South Africa is uh, a big market for, for fuels. It actually, if you look at, for example, Zambia, uh, it just really doesn't take that many hectares of, of sugar uh, to provide the entirety of uh, what, what you could mix right now or relatively soon uh, into their, their, their fuel mix. Uh, so if you're going to achieve the kind of scale that, that you need, uh, you need to link up to with, with South Africa. South Africa also needs the region in this. They don't have the land or the water to do this at the scale that might be required. We have no idea whether this is a great idea or not, uh, but we want to, to look into this particular option. Uh, bioenergy is, a, the, the, the fundamental attraction of bioenergy is its size. Uh, it's very, very, it's potentially very, very large. And so it can justify the kinds of investments that everybody's talking about in terms of transport infrastructure and, and other items to, in order to get these kinds of operations going. It also has the, the possibility to, to, to link uh, to, to agriculture and, and provide uh, jobs in, 
in, in the region, in Mozambique, in Zambia, potentially Zimbabwe, other places, uh, if you choose production technologies that are sufficiently labor intensive. So there's, there's potential uh, to do it right, and there's, there's potential also to, to, well, to, to not do it very well. So the question is, uh, with bioenergy, is, is not, uh, yeah, the question is, can we do it well? We know very, we, know we can do it badly. That, that's been proven. The, the question is, can we do it properly? We have quite a few partners uh, in this in this whole thing, uh, and and this is part of the the idea is to to, to link people together. Um, our partners, uh, and the current and and the ones that we're working on uh, still to to bring into this, obviously uh, we we've linked up with the treasury. Uh, I've, I've mentioned them. So we have the, the National Treasury in in South Africa. We're also working with the Center for Computation. Uh, regulation and economic development, CRED, uh, in, at the University of Johannesburg. In Zambia, we're working with the Indaba Agricultural Policy Research Institute. Uh, they're working on both the poultry value chains and the bioenergy. Uh, also in Zambia, we're working with the Zambian Institute for Policy Analysis and Research, uh, looking at the, the supermarkets uh, initiative. Uh, in Zimbabwe with the Supermarkets Institute, we're working with the Zimbabwean Economic uh, Zeparu Policy Analysis Research Unit or something like that. Uh, uh, so they're working on the, on the Supermarkets Initiative. Uh, we work with the Trade and Law Center at uh, down in, in, in Cape Town. Uh, they've been very involved in the sort of the nitty gritty of the implication of the uh, implementation of the of the regional research agenda. Um, we will also be linking up uh, with Mozambican institutes. Uh, there is a, an agricultural policy research institute uh, called CEPAG, which has a, a Portuguese uh, name. Uh, there's also uh, the uh, Ministry of Economics and Finance we're working with in a, in a separate group. Uh, we'll work with their Ministry of Energy and Natural Resources on, on energy and bioenergy. Uh, and we're working, there's a, a group called the uh, Center for Economic Analysis and Management Studies at the, at the University of Edward Munland, Munland in, in Mozambique. On the bioenergy side, we also have a link with the Overseas Development Institute in, in the UK because they bring uh, a certain degree of skills with respect to institutional arrangements for bioenergy production uh, because we want to understand these institutional arrangements in particular. This is, this is one of the key uh, elements, the, the labor intensity of the feedstock production, be it sugar or, or, or other items, that will seriously drive how the distribution of these benefits of, of, of the you know the value from this production is is distributed and and if we can not only do it in a way that that is economic but also generating jobs and, and broad broader based prosperity then then that's a bigger win so that that's something that we really want mm -hmm.